For this third painting in the American series, I thought I would tackle a mountain scene, but more from horizontal level. And the danger or difficulty with that is that we are reducing the field of depth. Uh, I have a strong horizontal line, which I'm gonna have to contend with. And that's where I think the haystacks will really come uh, and help me out there. Let's see how I go. With this scene, I really do need to um, say a special thanks to Gabor Sawarik. I probably butchered your surname, Gabor, I'm sorry for that. You've told me a dozen times. Um, quite often um, when we, Gabor and I catch up uh, for many years, it's always been once a year, except through COVID and um, in the 2008, nine, we didn't catch up. Uh, but we would always sort of swap some images. He would, I'm not sure if he's actually painted any of mine, but um, we have swapped a few here over the years. And so this is one of Gabor's. Uh, he does love painting mountain scenes. Uh, he probably loves them a little more than me, to be honest. Um, I do love them, but he's a real sort of, um, the, the mountains, the snow, the, the drama of winter, um, in which I've known Gabor nearly 19 years now. So um, it's great to have that camaraderie uh, with a fellow artist as well. So I'm getting these mid-tones in and the darks, even though I've learnt that as hard as I try, as careful as I am, I can never get the darks in as dark as I wish or want on this first pass through, this first run through. And I think that's due to the board absorbing the paint. So that's why try not to sort of panic if you're or get too, too overly concerned that uh, in your first block in, washing, that first stage that you think, oh geez, um, I've only got my dark as a dark as say seven and a half or even eight. It, for me, it, it really is that second stage. So this is my classic blocking stage. I'm using the mostly the uh, hog hair now, just I think to bring in a little bit more detail of the rocks, the darker sh rocks in shadow. I'm just bringing in that eclipse coma, because uh, with it being so far back, that's I think one of the great things that the eclipse comas do, they reduce detail, they help uh, shapes, values and colours recede nicely because they have that ability to remove the texture and vice versa in the foreground. We, we want to be trying to bring texture to the foreground to just slightly and artificially uh, increase the field of depth. Because to me, that's the one big thing that most people forget or miss out is that we first should be trying to create depth from the distance, the mid distance and foreground. We, or, and, and I, I will truly and easily admit that I was uh, sort of succumbed and uh, suckered into um, thinking, oh, look at this scene, it's got great detail. It's, I'm gonna do such a great painting, but then overworked it. So now I try and analyze it to make sure I'm getting those three planes at least, and that's negating the sky normally. Uh, so it wants to be sort of the, the mountain, that mid distance of the pine tree area, that bluey, greeny area, and then my foreground. So now bringing in that snow, um, these paintings have almost been a little bit of a tribute to uh, the US, but in winter, um, even though um, they're not all going to be winter paintings, but, um, and I think sometimes um, it is great to push yourself into different seasons. Uh, in my earlier paintings, I was probably guilty of uh, using color, which is probably one of my great natural strengths uh, to make my paintings work. And then I found that they were starting to get a little sickly sweet and too much color. And, uh, and then I was limiting the field of depth. Uh, that could also be partly due to uh, the lighting that I was using. I'm now using more of a cool white LED 
so my eyes are able are easier to uh, uh, to judge color temperature as well so once again there's so many things that uh, we can uh, have to contend with where if you think a standard fluorescent light is normally a fairly yellow light and especially as they get older they do tend to go that sort of yellowy almost aged appearance so here comes the quite crucial part is where I'm laying in the mid distance that horizon line and there's a little escarpment in that mid distance which I'm just coming right to there and I was so keen to leave that in and because uh, I thought you know what that's a good little separation it's a at a nice if we take the haystack and then it bounces to that so position wise I was happy but the shape wasn't reading as well as I would like so all this time that I'm painting I'm thinking I'm not sure if that's going to stay there. I think later I'll have to think of a way to uh, get around that as a compositional concern. Uh, but I do love painting uh, hay bales, haystacks, hay sheds. Um, there's certain things that we will and do try to paint over the years and we just find we've got a a bit of a knack for doing and I'm not sure why I think I naturally do like the color of hay it holds the light beautifully as well but like me trying to paint a an umbrella at the beach oh, I don't know why it's it took me years to solve that problem um, where when you think a hay bale a haystack like this isn't that different to a a um, umbrella and I think it's more probably not so much the umbrella part the arch part I think it's those negative shapes below it so um, so I think I'm pretty well wrapping this up even though this is a really spectacular setting we've got the mountains but there's nothing like having a great focal point and I think with this one the haystack even though I've introduced it into the scene it's what's really going to make this scene and I think it's what really made the scene as exciting as it turned out to be. So um, I think the takeaway from this one is, is to make sure we really get a fantastic primary focal point. Normally in the foreground is great because then we can use the um, field of depth to create depth and distance and the actual power in the scene. Hope you enjoyed this one. All the best. Bye for now.